In this video, we're going to tell you all about a few essentials that we have in our bus that we absolutely love. Now, this is not build essentials like a water heater, a power system, the, the water pump, or the faucets. It's just items for living in your bus. These are things you might not need, but you might be really happy you have. Some are more glamorous than others. Check it out. Ride across this country into this starlight. 12,000 miles, turn back, do it again. No destination, it's just a journey. You were my lover and friend. Let's get right into this list. We went through our bus and we found 10 things that we now find essential. Those would be different from person to person, but here are things that we really enjoy having and have made life a little bit easier living in this space. This list is in no particular order. They're not rated our number one favorite to our number 10 favorite. It's just a full list of things that we love having in our bus. Also, before we get started, we wanted to mention that this is not a sponsored video. We did not get any free products. We're not sponsored by any of these companies. This is 100% our opinion on what we think is essential in our bus. We have kitchen items, we have organizational items, we have electronics, we have all kinds of different things, so let's get right into it. First up on the list, number one, this is one of my absolute top essentials for living in our bus, and that is our instant pot. We actually got this instant pot as a bus warming gift from a friend and I didn't use it super frequently in the beginning, but as time went on, I started to think to myself, wow, I don't want to make rice on the stove, heat up water, take all that time, put all that moisture into the air of our bus where we're always trying to dehumidify the air. Puts all that moisture, all that time. I think I'm going to try to cook rice in the Instant Pot. And it started with one thing and then it went on and then it went on and turned into full meals, curries, soup, rice, beans, corn. We do almost everything in the Instant Pot. At least one part of each meal is made in our Instant Pot, which means we're using it several times a day. Yeah, once you start getting used to using it, if you lived in a house before and used it, you probably would have right away. We never had one. That's why it was sort of a slow burn for us. But as we realized all the things you could make in it, it became like prioritize that if it's possible for a few reasons. First, like she said, you're not putting any steam and extra heat in the bus, especially when it's warm out because you take it outside and release that steam. Second is we have renewable power source with our electricity through our solar and our battery. So we're not wasting all that propane that we have to go pay for. We've already made that financial investment in the system. So now we can just keep using that essentially at this point free power to cook as many things as possible. I've even started just heating up like leftover soup or something in the saute mode because yeah, why would I burn propane if I don't have to? So we do really like it. I would definitely recommend it as long as you have enough power to run an Instant Pot. They're 750 watts while they're drying, but as soon as it gets to pressure, it cycles off. So it doesn't really take a ton of power overall. It just surges kind of high for a little bit, but then it sits at pressure. And unless you're cooking something like beans from dry that take closer to an hour, it's really not that much of a power draw. So as long as you can handle that surge for a few minutes, yeah, I would definitely go ahead and use that as much as you can. For us, if we cook in the middle of the day with the sun out, we are not drawing from our battery bank at all. You're essentially cooking with the power of the sun. Like Drew said, it's free power. We talk a lot about diversifying your essential parts of your build, like your power and your propane, cooking, showering, and this is just an example of that. We can cook on our stove using propane or we can cook in our Instant Pot using electricity. Either way, we are able to make food no matter what. If one of those systems goes down, we can still cook and that is absolutely essential for being on the road because as we all know 
things happen that you don't plan for and you want to still be able to make a meal. If you have seen our Slow Road series, you know that I love my Instant Pot. This is featured in a lot of those videos and it's definitely an essential in our bus and in our kitchen specifically. Number two on the list, a composting bin, either a nice one like this or even just a separate trash can is gonna be a huge help when you're dealing with your trash. Essentially, we have this bin so that we can separate our organic garbage from the containers and recyclables, just dry things that don't rot. So anything that's going to rot and smell goes into here. Everything else goes into our garbage, which in the end we store outside in an external bag. So if you're keeping all your garbage together, you have lemon rinds, you have onion peels, you all this tasty stuff that starts to rot and smell, it's going to attract animals, it's going to attract bugs. So what we do, we separate the two. The dry garbage goes into our trash can, the wet organic material goes into here, and then every few days we just empty this out into the fire pit and we burn it. If it's particularly wet, like lemon rinds or uh, lime peels, like really wet coffee grounds, I will just put all of the compost material out on a baking tray in the sun for just a few hours, let it dry out, and then it burns up really easily, no problem. What I really love about this specific one is that within the lid, there's a charcoal filter and you can buy new ones, you can change this out, and then there's little holes in the top because what you're putting in here is organic matter and it sits on our countertop. It's gonna start to rot after a few days and this makes sure that it doesn't smell, especially in a small space like a bus or a van or any vehicle because burning your organic material also means you just have less garbage in general. Mm -hmm. And for us, we eat a ton of fresh food. So this was a huge portion of our garbage. So now it's not smelly, we have less garbage and I'm happy. Yeah, at the end of the day, whether you're going to take this to a compost recycling center or just throw it out or burn it, you are making a much better choice than putting it all into one garbage bag because all the other stuff is pretty much recyclable. You can put that in a big bag that can usually store outside because there's no food there for any animals to come and try to get in the middle of the night. This has been a huge help. We only implemented this system within the last few months and it's been a game changer for us. I cannot believe we didn't do it <laughs> earlier. Number three on our list is this Bose speaker. We have had this baby since 2018. Mm. This has been in all of our rigs at some point. This thing is a champ. <laughs> we love this speaker and we are both musicians. So we're kind of picky about sound quality. It's a blessing and a curse. But this Bose speaker has amazing sound quality. You can see it's in the shape of a cylinder. So the speaker is completely 360. And especially when we're watching movies, we hook us up to our projector. And because it is 360, if you hang it somewhere in the room, we'll usually hang it off of a cabinet or something. It is such good sound quality. This thing is a monster. Listen to podcasts on this. We listen to music, watch movies. Yeah, unless you're like a real audio nut who installed a ton of speakers in the first place on your build, it's nice that we live in a time where these kind of speakers are available. They're just very universal and you can get pretty good quality nowadays and you can move it around, you know? You can take it outside for some music by the fire or you can, like she said, put it on for your movie. A lot easier just to get a little Bluetooth speaker of some sort and yeah, it's definitely probably one of the more fun things on this list. It is. Number four is our shark vacuum cleaner. This thing is incredible. For years, we had a really, really terrible small vacuum cleaner, and I don't know what we were doing or why we were doing that. This thing is amazing. This has the suction of a regular house vacuum cleaner. We can vacuum our rugs with it because it has all these different little attachments. And one of the best things as far as living in a bus with this thing is that it has a base 
that also charges it. You can see the little light is on, it turns blue when it's charging. So we set this underneath the table of our booth where we have a plug. So every day I sweep and then I vacuum all the corners and then I put it right back into its base and it's charged whenever I need to use it. This thing, I love this thing. <laughs> You should actually call it like the northern pike because it looks like, like that fish, like a pike. Swimming. It looks just like a fish. <laughs> I like how it's small and pretty square here so you can get into the corners easy. Yeah, like you said, I don't know why we didn't get one of these a long time ago. I definitely recommend it. It makes cleaning up a lot easier and it's small size, just fits in all the spots. The thing about this bus and probably most builds is that there is tiny little corners and surfaces. We have shaker style cabinet doors. So all of the edges underneath the cabinets, there's so many tiny little spaces that are really hard to clean. So cleaning the bus every day and knowing that you got every square inch of it, it's really satisfying. And I don't know how we lived without this thing. Now you just pull this baby out and you just let this Northern Pike swim right downstream. Number five, like many things in this small space, if it can collapse down or hide away some way, it's gonna be good. Collapsible kitchen stuff. You got your measuring cups, they break down, bowls, uh, this is a colander here, Tupperware storage. All this stuff just collapses down and it makes it so much easier to store in your very limited cabinet space. We have two sets of these containers. So we have eight of them that collapse down into these little rectangles, which means we can fit so much more inside of our overhead cabinets. It's such an efficient use of space. What's that, Savannah? What is this? Oh, this is the funnel. Yeah. Collapsible funnel. Actually, we have had friends and family members make fun of us because we have so many collapsible kitchen items, but it's so efficient. <laughs> it's such a good use of space. I can fit so much more inside of my kitchen because a lot of the things break down flat, especially bulkier items like this colander. It comes open and the sides expand. Oh, that one's nice because then it goes over the edge of the sink and holds it above the sink. Yeah. If you can find anything in a collapsible version, 100% recommend. Item number six, temp sensor. This one's really nice. It has two temperatures, as you can see, internal and external. So one is on this device. The other is a remote sensor you can place anywhere you like. We like to use it to put in our battery box. A lot of lithium batteries do not have a low temp disconnect. So if you're in that boat, it's great to have a temp sensor in that compartment to know when you're getting close to that freezing temperature where the batteries will get damaged if they are charged. If you see you're getting there, you can just switch the circuit off from your solar panels and wait till you're at a safe temperature to start charging those batteries again. Another great feature is if you have pets, they even make these that can connect to a phone. So if the pet part is a big concern for you, you can get a special kind of like pet temp sensor that will let you know as the temperature rises, when you're getting into a dangerous level, you can see on your phone, oh, it's starting to get hot. I need to get back. I need to get my dog or cat or whatever out of the bus. They make a million different versions of these temperature sensors. Like Drew said, they make pet specific ones that will alert you on your phone if the internal temperature is getting too hot or too cold. So there's a million different versions of this, but builds in general are not hands off and temperature is just one of the things that you need to be keeping track of inside of your bus. Number seven on our list is an organizational item that we use to organize our clothes in the closet, and that is packing cubes. These are so useful for organizing items within your closet. The big reason is because when you're driving, a lot of things will come flying out of your closet or your cabinets. And if these socks were all individually placed onto the shelf, you would have a sock explosion. So these packing cubes help keep everything organized, not just so that when you need a certain item, you know exactly where it is, but so that everything is together, it's in one spot. If it does come out of your closet, it's just one 
big cube and you can put it right back in. These come in four, six, eight packs. You can get all different sizes and that's really great for like shirts versus socks or, you know, smaller items, bigger items. You can organize it all sorts of different ways and it's a great way to organize such a small space and keep things where you can easily access them. Number eight on the list, reusable washcloths or dish towels. These specific ones are called Swedish dish towels and we like them because they're a little bit more durable than a regular rag. When they're wet, they're really pliable and when they're dry, they're really stiff and they kind of shrink up. So we use these for anything that we would use a paper towel or a dish rag for, but then when we're done, when they're really, really dirty, we put them in their own load of laundry at the laundromat, they dry out and we just store them in our drawer. These are great because they're reusable, so not only are you saving money by not buying paper towels all the time, but it's also better for the environment. And as we talked about earlier in the video, we're always trying to reduce our trash and this helps with exactly that. Item number nine on the list is getting us back into the kitchen. We like to cook a lot so all these kitchen things are really nice to have and if you've ever used a propane oven in an RV you'll find they're a little bit inconsistent on the heat and they don't usually run as hot as what it says. Our solution that helps us a lot is putting in a pizza stone you keep this in the bottom just above the rack where the flame is, and it just helps keep a more consistent temperature and a hotter temperature in the oven. Because once this heats up, it's gonna continue to radiate heat, even if the propane thing is fluctuating a bit. I once baked a batch of cookies in our oven that the front cookies were completely raw and the back cookies were burned. So if you have any experience with a propane RV oven, you know that getting that consistent temperature is really important for whatever you're making. We found that it helps pretty much anything that we are baking in the oven. And as you can see, we've also made a lot of pizzas on it. <laughs> Number 10 is all about fighting one of the most common issues in any RV or build, and that is moisture. This is a little dehumidifier that doesn't take any power while it's absorbing moisture. So if you don't have a large battery bank, you aren't able to have a traditional dehumidifier plugged in all the time. This doesn't draw any power and it has these colored crystals inside. So when they're orange, this thing is ready to go, it's completely dry. As it absorbs moisture, the crystals turn green, and that's when you know it's time to plug it in and charge it. So when they turn green, you just plug this into any outlet. It says to let it sit for 12 hours, and you'll notice that it starts feeling really warm. It's just heating up to dry itself out. The crystals turn from green back to orange, and you're ready to hang it back up anywhere in your bus. We have a few of these in our build and they have worked really well, especially to fight that northeast summer humidity that is so oppressive and can be really damaging to your build if you get mold. Yeah, they're just another great tool in the arsenal to fight humidity in your bus. Even if you're running a humidifier all the time, these are great because they're like on location dehumidifiers. So you can put them in the cabinet underneath your sink where you might have some like condensation moisture from the sink draining or under your bed. If your water tank is there, if you're getting like hot to cold, you're going to get that condensation on the tank. So that's moisture under your bed. So you can put these wherever you want. We have a few of them. We put them in specific locations and we found they're very helpful. Is this a fun essential? It's more fun than mold. Okay, I know we said we'd do 10, but I was digging through my kitchen and I found another essential and that is these Snow Peak bowls and plates. This one's more like a plate. Yeah. A bowl plate. This one's like your regular plate. And then we also have bowls. These are really great because they are made of titanium. So even if you're on really rough roads or you're leaving them outside at a campfire, they're not going to break. You can have regular dishes, fine, no problem. But it is nice to have something like this that can stand up to, you know, somebody dropping it outside. We've broken so many dishes over the years of having our van and now our bus. I just got really tired of rebuying plates. These are 
never going to break. They might get bent, but we can leave them outside. They could fall from our cabinets while we're driving and it is no problem at all. All right, guys, that wraps it up. Now you got your sword and your shield. You're ready for bus life battle. Actually, that's just a list of things we really like that make living in here more comfortable. They'd be different for everyone, of course, but here's some ideas and maybe you will like them to adapt to your situation. We've been wanting to put together a list like this for a really long time because you guys ask about all the different components of our build. A lot of them are absolutely essential, like the water heater and the power and all of that, but there's a lot more that goes into a build and especially living on the road and not only that, being comfortable. If you would like links for any of the products that we talked about in this video, I am going to try to find all of them and link it in the description below. Thanks for watching, guys. See you later.